Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. All right, cool. All right, so um, I, for those who don't know me, I'm Evan Schwartz, I'm working on Interledger pretty much full time. Um, so what I've been working on for the past couple of weeks has been some use case demos, kind of to build, try out building things on top of Interledger, um, see how easy it is, see what can be improved, and then see what see what we can do with it and show it off. So I'll just kick kick off this little very quick presentation that I gave at the the World Wide Web Conference Developer Day. Um, so this is about what we can build on Interledger. So First of all, where do all presentations start? After, of course, they start on Google Images, searching for kind of images to use in the presentation. But of course, this was a public presentation, so have to look by usage rights. Um, and the options are pretty terrible. Um, this was actually one of the image results for micropayments. Don't understand why, but it was. Um, very limited results. Um, so it's possible that, that that wasn't the best search to start with, but if we think about all the usage rights, what's that, what that's actually filtering by is that's looking for Creative Commons licenses. And while Creative Commons is amazing, um, not everything is free, or at least legally free. Um, as we know everything can be found on the Pirate Bay, um, though I've, of course, never used it, only heard about it. Um, even Kanye West thinks so. He got caught on the Pirate Bay because he posted a tweet um, and one of the browser tabs open uh, was the Pirate Bay. Um, and this is the man that's starting yet another music streaming service, which is called Tidal. It's kind of a competitor to Spotify and the like. Um, well, that's not great. Um, these days, everybody basically wants to start their own streaming service. Apple has one, Spotify, Google, et cetera. And we can ask the question, why? Torrents are actually a very good way of distributing content. After all, until 2014, Spotify actually used torrents under the hood to deliver its content because because it's a it's a good, efficient way of doing it. So why don't we just use torrents? Well, there is the whole, -da 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 -da. you wouldn't steal a car if anybody recognizes these, uh, this, uh, this um, video from the 90s or early 2000s, I think. Um, so the reason why we don't use torrents more is because they're associated with piracy. Um, and as this video kindly reminds us, piracy is a crime. Um, but one of the one of the points I'd like to make with this is that torrenting is only piracy because it doesn't involve paying the artists. Um, you know, no, no paying the artist. Um, so if only there are an easy way to send tiny amounts of money to anyone, and that is of course what we're what we're working on here and why everybody's on this call. Um, so we need a license like Creative Commons, but one that involves payments. Um, and so that's one of the things I'm going to be showing off in a second. So I have this kind of handy command line tool um, where you can add you add various metadata to an MP3 file. Um, you just say what what your ILP account address is that you'd like to receive payments at, um, a public key to sign the license, and then a price per minute to charge for the license, and that's it. Um, and so what if you could torrent without it being piracy? Um, and this is a this is a preview. Just um, uh, this is using heavily making heavy use of a really cool project called WebTorrent, which a bunch of other people are working on, which is re-implementing torrents in the browser using JavaScript. Um, this is using Interledger and the uh, red and blue demo wallets that we have set up. If if anybody hasn't checked those out, I'd highly recommend it. If you go to red.ilpdemo.org or blue.ilpdemo.org. You can send money back and forth using ILP. Um, and so coming soon, what this is showing off is an ecosystem where uh, you could be torrenting a file and you'd be paying the original content creator, you'd be paying the seeders, basically everybody involved with these tiny amounts of money. And this is all using ILP. 
Um, and so what I'm gonna show off is a, is a client that doesn't, doesn't look super pretty, but that's, but that's actually doing this. Um, and yeah, so let me show that off. Um, so first of all, um, what this is using, um, and let me speak just a little bit more about that. This is using um, something called the Five Bells Wallet client. Um, and so kind of the bigger picture on this project is uh, a lot of people on this call are interested in figuring, in answering some of the details around how Interledger actually works and kind of digging into the, the technical details. Um, we want to have materials also for another, another audience though, which is the audience that doesn't care how this works. They just want, they just want to build other things. Um, and we want to make ILP just an ama a really awesome way to do that. And so um, this is a very simple uh, wallet client um, where you uh, instantiate it, you just give it your address and password. Um, you can send payments very easily with, um, you know, as simple as providing the destination account, destination amount, and some memo that you want. Um, and then you get notifications of incoming payments, and that's kind of it. And the idea there is we want the, like, as it says here, um, payments should work like magic. So that's kind of another strand of, of project that we're going to be working on to just make the developer experience really awesome. So let me show you what, what I built with this. Um, so here's the, on the left side, you can see this is the um, very basic torrent client. Um, and this is a fork of a project that the web torrent guys put together. Um, but this one has ILP enabled. So I log into my account, username and password, and then some price per gigabyte to seed. So now if I go and I try to seed a file, um, what this one doesn't have a license attached. What it'll say is um, you can't seed or download a torrent without a, li without a license attached. Um, use the payment license tool to add the license info to the file. Okay, so that's over here. Um, and so this is, as I said before, a command line tool to add some metadata information to an MP3 file. Um, and what I'm going to add is just, um, so it's first asking me, okay, what's the address you'd like to receive payments? Boom, um, public key, price per minute, and there it is. And I can read the license back, um, and there we go. And so what, what I'm showing off here is, um, basically we wanna create an experience that's kind of like Creative Commons, where for those who don't know what Creative Commons is, um, it's kind of a very simple licensing framework that artists and other kind of media creators can use to uh, basically tweak the the rights that they want to give away their their content with however it, since it doesn't involve money it's only for things that are that are fr you're giving it away for free um, but the, the benefits of it are that um, it can be encoded programmatically so it's very easy for you for programs to discover it so that's why when you go to google image search you can filter by license information that's actually searching for creative commons licenses um, and it's also very easy for the creator so it's it makes it really easy on both the creator side and on the licensee side or the user side um, but there's no money involved so what we want is something that has a kind of similar experience where it's super easy for the creator to get get started you know you can add add the license in you know five seconds or so um, but then where you actually get paid so what I have set up here, um, sorry for the clutter, but there's a lot of moving pieces with this. So up here we have um, Alice is the original creator. We have uploaders one and two, uploaders one and two, and then we have the downloader. Um, and all of these people are sort of set up with ILP accounts. Uh, but one of the things I wanna emphasize is, as with all things ILP, well, these people are in different systems. So the, there's three of them on red and then the downloader is, is on blue. And one of the reasons why this is a useful thing to show off with ILP specifically is because it doesn't make any sense to build this kind of, this license thing that I was describing. If you're just going to tie it to, I don't know, a single company's system like a PayPal or a Visa um, or even a Bitcoin because, um, not everyone wants the same currency. Not everybody has an account on the same system. But so in order to do this, in order to even make this kind of 
a thing worth thinking about. We need something like ILP where you can just pay anyone and be ex and you can expect that anyone will be able to pay you. So enough talking. So over here, um, I have three of the clients set up. Um, one of them is set up as uploader one, uploader two, and the downloader. So um, what I'm going to do is we have the, um, we're going to grab the torrent file um, from the first uploader. I'm gonna drag that over here. And what's gonna happen first, um, if the thing is still connected, um, is that uh, the, oh, you can see it's starting to go. So um, the downloader, um, if everything is working properly, will basically pay the, li the license holder um, as well as the seeders. And you can see the, the, the downloader is paying in these very, very tiny increments, but increasing increments as the, as the seeder sends it more or the uploader sends it more information. Um, but we can actually do this with multiple peers at the same time. So if I go and have uploader two also seed the file, um, then you'll see the downloader will start to pay not only one, but two of the uploaders simultaneously. Um, and they're paying in these very, very tiny amounts and getting, um, paying in these very tiny amounts uh, and making it go faster. And so the, the amount of the payment is dependent on a bunch of different factors, but um, that's kind of where, where some of the interesting stuff comes in here is figuring out actually how much to pay, but this is using interledger. So if we flip back to uh, these, the wallets, we can actually see the payments kind of going in. Um, if you see the one, one down here, um, you can see the payments happening in, in real time. Um, and so if I flip back, let's see, this is still going. So, um, uh, so yeah, so what, what this is showing off is that, um, we can use interledger to make these kind of very tiny payments. Uh, it's actually efficient enough to do that. Um, though we're obviously still working on the performance of the reference implementation, uh, but this can theoretically scale to handle any volume of payments. Um, and we can pay between, between different systems. So part of the, the great user experience that we think Interledger provides is that you don't have to be on the same system in order to send and receive payments. You can be on different systems. And so um, what this says over here is that uh, we finished downloading and now we've paid a certain amount to the seeders or the uploaders um, and a certain amount to the creator for the license originally. Um, and this is taking advantage of Interledger because it wouldn't, it doesn't make sense. One of the things we often talk about is that Interledger is kind of a, it's a payment method fit for other standards. And what we mean by that is you don't want to, if you're building another standard or another protocol, something like BitTorrent or something like this payment license, this license that I've shown off, uh, you don't want to tie it to a system that is, is either controlled by some single party or that only has one currency in it. So you need something like Interledger in order to make these kind of use cases even possible. And under the hood, it's using um, this wallet client, uh, which the whole idea there is to make this really easy developer experience so that people who want to build stuff on Interledger don't even need to understand how it works under the hood. You just have this very simple interface to it and you can get going and build stuff on top of it. All right, that's all I've got.